Welcome to the Empowerment Hour, a podcast dedicated to the woman ready to take charge of her life, live in her purpose, and be unapologetically authentic. I am your host, Nancy Ruffin, award-winning author, mommypreneur, and the self-proclaimed Latina Oprah, who is dedicated to helping women unleash their power, discover their purpose, and live up to their fullest potential. My goal is to empower you, inspire you, and help you unlock your passions and discover your purpose so that you live the most fulfilled and impassioned life. If you're ready to make a change and start living on purpose, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Empowerment Hour podcast. You know who it is. It's your girl, Nancy Ruffin. And I'm so excited because today I have joining me my own professional makeup artist, Melissa Cunillera. Hi. Hi. First of all, thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule to kind of sit with me this evening and talk all things beauty and makeup and you know positive self-esteem welcome thank you thank you so much Nancy I know this has been a long time coming we've been talking about it for a while so I'm really excited to be on the show I'm really excited to, um, that you asked me to be on here absolutely I just want to give uh, my listeners a brief history um, and for those of you who have been following me for a really long time and have been kind of seeing my journey evolve, then you know that last year I had done a, a photo shoot. And Melissa and I, we have been friends and connected on social media for a while. And so when I needed to have my makeup professionally done, it was a no brainer. She was the one that I wanted to do my makeup. And so she kind of, she came out with me on my shoot. And I have, when I tell you guys that it was probably the most fun I've ever had in such an uncomfortable type of situation, (laughs) Um, you know, Melissa and my other girlfriend, um, Brooklyn Jesse was with us that day, but they really, first of all, Melissa made me look absolutely beautiful. I did not recognize myself. (laughs) Oh my God. Um, <laughs> you, you're so beautiful. I'm like, you're <laughs> thank so you. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we, so her and I, it was a connection that we, you and I met on social media, right? Uh, yeah. So I had reached out to you. Um, I started, I started following you like back in like 2016, I believe. And then I had purchased your book, um, to live on purpose, life on purpose. Yes, live on I, purpose. I the title, sorry. Um, and then I had read it. And I started putting all my friends onto the book. I was like, you guys have to read this book. It's so touching. Um, and yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know her personally, but just from like her social media, she seems really authentic and she's awesome. And so um, then I had, so I, I kind of had reached out to you and just like gave you some anecdotes of like things I was going through. And like, you were just so welcoming and so warm when I had reached out to you. Um, so I remember when you finally asked me to do your makeup, I was so excited. I was like, oh, my God, finally you get to meet in person after, like, just communicating and touching base online. Um, so I was really excited when I got to meet you, and we've kind of been just friends ever since then. Yes, and you know what? I have to thank you, and I don't think that we've had an opportunity to talk since the vision board workshop. But honey, I did not realize how many people you really have referred to me. Like every new face in my workshop, I was like, well, you know, I, I, I always make it my business to really talk to the new people that I don't know or that I don't recognize. And every single new person was like, oh yeah, my friend Melissa recommended you to me. <laughs> so... Thank you. So, like, my, my next my next workshop, whatever I do, is on me. Like, you have, you know, a complimentary oh, ticket to um to my event or to a book or whatever you want, just because. Thank you so much. I, I want to thank you. I mean, th- that's how I grow, really, by these awesome, you know, referrals and the fact that you believe in me and my work so much. I'm so grateful for that. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, you are really authentic, and I don't just say that just to say that. Like, I actually mean that, and I feel like just from the time I read your book to the time I did my vision board using your book and using the journal entries that I had, um, that you had in your book, um, I feel like it's 
just my life has like excelled mm. and I think my friends actually see that and they they're like dude like what have you been doing like you're just you know I'm, I'm usually a positive person but of course we have our moments but right. I think they knew what I was going through last year and like I was just like roughing it through and like just making things happen for myself regardless of what I was going through emotionally um so they saw it for themselves, like, oh wow, like I also want to be a part of this. I want to, I want to meet this woman as well. So, girl, keep doing what you're doing because you're really reaching people. Thank you, thank you. So I guess now, I mean, enough about me because this is about you. <laughs> and, you know, my listeners know a lot about me. And so the point of having you on is really to kind of expose you um, to a broader audience because I personally thank think you. that you are amazing. You, oh, um, you. you remind me a lot of myself in the sense of how you approach your work. And you're very passionate about the work that you do. And that's one of the thank things you. that I admire about you. Um, so I guess, because I don't know this, I don't know, but what was it, um, that really kind of gravitated you towards, you know, the makeup industry, like, you know, how did you get your start as a makeup artist and how long have you been doing this? Um, so I've been doing this since 2011. Um, and then before that I used to just do my friend's makeup, like my, we would be going out clubbing, partying. And they're like, Mel, can you come over and do my makeup? I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and it was, I think it was like when I finished college and my friends were really like, you should really pursue this. Like, you're really passionate about it. You know how to communicate with the person that's in your chair. Um, and you can really, like, do this as a career. Um, so I actually started taking, I was working as a marketing manager for a publishing company, and I hated that job. But it gave me the financial opportunity to be able to take classes, mm. make up, actual makeup classes at night. Right. Because if anyone knows, makeup classes are expensive. <laughs> um, so I was able to do that, and I loved it. Like, I loved it so, so much. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what time I got home, how tired I was. I was just around creative people. I was in my element. Um, and then from there, I started freelancing. At, I started working at Sephora part-time okay. so I still had my full-time job and I was also working part-time um and then I did a fashion this was like the turning point for my career I did a fashion show um so when you're starting off you do a lot of free work it's just part of the industry girl I think um, that's in every industry and that's what people don't understand yeah, and people don't realize yes that. Yeah, it's like you have to pay your dues yep. and like I'm still paying my dues like this is not you don't it's not an overnight success you're not just gonna be the next you know, make, uh, like famous makeup artists and stuff like that. Right. You really have to pay your dues um, and work hard. So I remember I did a free fashion show, um, and the sponsor of the show, I didn't even know this at the time, the sponsor of the show was NARS, wow. the company. Mm -hmm. And I connected with the one person who is, like, the head of the their beauty um who's like the head makeup artist wow and she's like actually now like an international makeup artist and so i remember speaking to her and you know i had questions you know when you work on models and stuff like that and at the end of the show i stayed behind and like was helping her clean up and just like talking to her and i think for her she was just like impressed with my work ethic yeah she's like you're one of the only makeup artists who are here free who actually stayed behind to help clean up mm. and so from there, she's like, take down my email. Um, she's like, so I had reached out to her after that, and it kind of just started off from there. I started freelancing for NARS for a few years. Um, she had me in contact with someone, and I started working for the company. Um, and then I had freelanced on my own for a while. And now, um, yeah, so now I still freelance. But I still have a full-time job, but I also freelance a lot. Um, and I work for Morphe, the makeup company as well. That's so impressive. And there were a few gems that you just touched on in that brief description of how you got your big break that I really want to highlight because I think that they apply to all industries, not just um, the makeup industry. But the first thing that you said was that you worked, you know, um, in marketing for the publishing house and you absolutely hated that job, but, <laughs> but, but it provided you with the financial freedom so that you could pursue what you love. 
Right. So the first gem that I want you guys to jot down here is you have to do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do eventually. Right. So whenever you're chasing your dreams and whenever you're working towards a goal, sometimes you have to kind of stick with the things that you don't want to do because they that thing is providing you with the opportunity to pursue that dream, whatever it may be. And so that was the first thing. The second thing that you said was that when you first started, you were doing a lot of free work. Right. And so I think a lot of people forget when you're starting out, you cannot command, you know, prices as if you were at the top of your game. Right. Because you don't have the experience yet. Right. So you're going to have to do things for free. You're going to have to pay your dues and you have to prove yourself. And that's whether you're a makeup artist, that's um, whether, you know, you're someone who kind of does work like me and you want to do coaching or consulting or whatever it is, you have to prove yourself because you have to show people that you're worth paying for, right? People are not going to pay for something if they don't know the quality of the work that they're going to receive. So that was the... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, no. I'm fine. No, you go ahead. I want um, this is about you. So go. <laughs> um, I want to touch on that too. Like, also as an artist, don't sell yourself short because, like, do the free work that feels right to you. Mm-hmm. So, like, not everything that's free is worth you doing. That's, that's right. That artists make a huge mistake. Um, they take on photo shoots that you're never going to get images because the photographer shady. Yes. Um, they and, and like. You know, they, they meet with models who say they're going to do this and then never show up. So it's like, you also have to know as an artist right. what you stand for because then people respect you as well. So that's another thing. Like, make sure that if you're doing three things, it's something that is important to you and that's something that's going to help you in your career. That is actually excellent advice because I think um, that for a lot of us, we tend to undervalue ourselves. Um, one, I think one of the reasons we do that is because subconsciously we may not feel that we're worthy to command a, a certain salary. Right. And that's something else that we kind of have to learn how to overcome. Um, and I think that it's fear too, because, um, I think we want to work, right. And we also want to get paid. And so we believe, all right, we ask um, for this amount, it might be too much. They might not want to pay. And so, I think that we have to kind of break out of that thinking because when you're great, your work is going to show and people are willing to pay for that level of greatness. But you have to be also selective with who your clients are, right? You can't expect someone that has a budget of maybe, I don't know, a hundred bucks to be able to pay um, whatever fee you're asking. And that might be three, four, five hundred dollars, you know, depending on what, what level you are in your career. So I think that that was an excellent point that you just made. Um, and then the last thing that I really wanted to highlight is that you really went above and beyond that like your work ethic is everything. And that was really what set you apart and what stood out for that representative, you know, of, of the, was it NARS you said the company, yeah, for the company. Mm-hmm. you know, and like, like she had said to you that you were one of the few makeup artists who was there working for free and then you still stayed, you know, to help with the cleanup. But in doing that, you made that very important connection. And that's what people need to realize. Sometimes what you're giving up is worth what you're going to get back in return. Absolutely. And I feel like, I, I see it all the time in this industry, like the beauty industry, where you have artists who have such huge egos that like, even cleaning up or, or even like, you know, fine, you create your dues, right? But, like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Right. Like, and you don't even know who you're going to connect with. And that's, that's the bigger picture. Because at the time, I didn't even, I had just met her. I didn't know that she was an international makeup artist for them. I didn't know anything. I just knew, okay, Nars is going to sponsor this event when I got there. And that was it. And then from there, it just, then I found out who she was. Right. That's, that's amazing. And that's really key. Um, because in any industry, whatever job that you're doing, wherever you're working, 
one, it's important to treat everyone the same, to treat everyone with, with kindness respect, yeah. and with respect, because you never know who that who that person is, right? You know, mm-hmm. I always say this that the cleaning lady, you know, could be um, the aunt to like the CEO of the company that you know you're looking to be a part of. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. like you never know. Sometimes it's the least person that you would expect that could be the person who's in a position to help move you and elevate you to that next level. Um, Absolutely. So, um, so I want to kind of shift gears a little bit here um, because, you know, we're talking, we were talking about how you got started, but I find now, um, particularly now, and I don't know why there's been this huge shift or maybe I'm just more aware of it now because I'm older. Um, but I feel like we're in a time where the makeup and the beauty industry are like really booming i mean everywhere you look there's um makeup artists i know young teenage girls who are um you know who are passionate about that and are kind of going that route of becoming makeup artists as well and we've been seeing a lot of these beauty companies start paying more attention to women of color i mean you know thanks to rihanna like now every woman of color has a shade of you know a foundation that can match their skin um but I guess with so many makeup artists in the industry, right, what is it about your style that sets you apart from everyone else? Um, I think the fact that I'm hardworking, um, I'm extremely professional. I will never, ever show up to any job with, like, dirty brushes, mm-hmm. a makeup kit. Um, and also, I think also my personality, and I don't, that sounds so cliche, but it's almost the truth, like, when you, when I walk into somewhere, I greet everyone. I'm extremely friendly. Yes. Um, and I'm just open because you're there to do a job, but you're also there to connect with someone. Absolutely. And a lot of times that you meet women, some women are terrified of getting their makeup done. And as, you, as you're an artist, it's almost like you have to learn certain communication skills because women are afraid to speak up as to what, they are trying what kind of look they want. Mm-hmm. So as an artist, you have to listen and speak to them and kind of guide them through the process. And most importantly, make them feel comfortable as they're sitting in your chair. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's what really sets me apart because I've seen artists who, and everyone has their style, don't get me wrong, and I'm not knocking anyone. Right. But you have artists who, who never speak to clients, who will do a makeup application and not even say a word to the client. And to me, it's like, okay, that person is paying you for an experience, essentially, right? You don't have to, like, speak about your whole entire life. That's fine. But even just making them feel comfortable right, is, is what they're there for, essentially. And, yeah, and I think, and as a former client, and I've used you, yeah. you know, a couple of times, I do have to um, say that, yes, that you all of those things that you just mentioned are key and critical, I think, to that relationship. Because when I was sitting in your chair, I, I, I felt absolutely comfortable with you. Um, I trusted you that you were going to make me feel beautiful and not make me look like a clown, you know. <laughs> um, because I think that you said something that was really important. You have to be able to listen to your client, even when they may not be um, really communicating to you verbally, you know, what they want. What they want. So um, I think that you do a very great job at that. And you do have an amazing personality. I remember the first time we met in person, I felt like I had known you for like ever. And I think that that's, it's been an easy um, development of our relationship. Like it's evolved like seamlessly and it's never, it never feels pressure or fake or phony. It's like an authenticity um, that you also possess that I think, um, helps um, people connect with you and as a makeup artist in your industry I think that that's a really great skill for you to have thank you so much um I I really I really am passionate about it and I think another point I wanted to make too is I share my knowledge like Mm. I have clients who text me like months after their appointment to ask me a question and I have no problem answering um because at the end of the day it's like what it doesn't take anything for me to be able to answer something or if they have a product question or if right. they text me a picture of something. Um, and it's also, like I said, it's establishing that connection. It's establishing that relationship with a, with a client. That, yeah. And then 
and you will find that when you um, cultivate those relationships, I'm more than positive that once you have a client, they become like a repeat customer. They, they will continue to come back oh, to you. Absolutely. Right. I and have a few clients who I've done their, you know, their a makeup application for them to go out. Uh, then, then they call me back because, oh, they have, you know, they're getting engaged. They got engaged. So right. then I do their bridal shower. Then I do their wedding. And then I do their, their, ba- their baby shower. So it's like you're, you're building these relationships and you have to keep them going. And they have to be genuine relationships that you care about. The right. Too. Right. So I want to talk a little bit about the Jenners and Kardashians because I think they've built the, the, <laughs> the enti- their entire brand has been built on beauty. Like really that's what they yeah. sell. Because when you think about them, they have no real talent or skill other right. than the fact that they're gorgeous and that they've learned how to use that beauty and sell it. Right. And so they have everyone wanting to buy whatever they sell, no matter what it is, people want to buy it. <laughs> um, well, if, I think in terms of talent, they got that business mindset down pat because they just know how to sell stuff. Yeah, they, they absolutely yeah. do. And shout out to Chris Jenner, honey, because that mama. <laughs> yeah. Mom, monitor. What is it, mom? Yes, mom, she again. she has really She's done. She has done it. You know, people can. People can knock her parenting skills or whatever it may be. I'm not no one to judge because I know how hard it is to be a parent. But, right. you know, she has really set up her family um, financially. Like they have to, they, they should, they don't have to worry about anything for as long as they, they live. And I think that they are a testament to what we should all aspire to and not in the way that they've amassed, you know, their wealth or the things that they actually do. But the mindset that they have, that they keep it in the family, that everything that they do is together. Like they don't, it's very rare they allow outsiders in because it's only them. It's only them. Um, And they've they've created this like mega empire. But I think on the same token, we see a lot of young girls, right, looking Mm -hmm. to Kylie Jenner and to Kim and Chloe. Um, I guess as role models or people that they're, they're looking up to them, like to aspire to be them. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Considering their image, considering their reputations, you know, what are your thoughts on young girls looking to them as role models? Um, I mean, in the beauty industry, you see, I think the beauty industry has shifted. Because, like, in the 90s, it was focused on a lot of supermodels. Um, and now it's focused on, like, these young beauty influencers, the Kylie Jenner, and also other social media influencers, right? Right. And essentially, as an artist, you see all of this, and you're like, oh, my God, they all look the same. This is so true. When yes. I go to tra- yes. When I go to shows, when I go to trade shows and things like that, um, like the, be- the big beauty shows, all the women look the same. They have the same eyeshadow application, same eyeliner application. And it's like, where's the individuality? Mm. And it's like, okay, they're, they're trying to sell products, essentially, right? Their, their whole thing is they want to sell you their makeup line, they want to this, they want to that. But there's no creativity behind anything right. that's being done. Right. Um, and I think, you know, we have... People think that makeup started when social media started, and that's one of the biggest problems that I have with, like, these artists today that they don't learn the history of what makeup really was, and, like, makeup from the 90s, makeup from the 80s, and, like, the big-name makeup artists that really paved the way for the makeup artists of today. Right. Um, Like, let's say contouring. Contouring is not a new thing. Contouring, the Kardashians, like, really were the ones who start who uh who made it made popular it again. yeah and only because makeup by mario his inspiration was kevin Aplant. right and if anyone if you're an artist these are like artists that you should know like kevin Aplant is like one of was one of the biggest makeup artists in the 90s the cindy crawford the naomi campbell the tyra bank all their he does all their makeup right and if you look at all his books all his beauty books he, he is the one that really started contouring. And people don't know that because they think, like, oh, the Kardashians 
started it. No. Right. These are books that have been inspired by things that have already happened. You know, and it's interesting that you say that because I think that a lot of the younger generation um, really, know you know, they really look to these, um, you know, to, to this family and to these influencers as if they are the creators, right, of, of, of these things um, that yeah. we, that people like you and I know have been in existence, you know, for decades already. And they've just, um, they're just using it now to capitalize off of it. They found a really creative way to sell something old, right? And, and yeah, make... they're just packaging it differently. Absolutely. Differently. So do you think that, um, you know, the, the Kylie's and the Kim's have a responsibility um, to the youth as role models or not so much? Um, I feel like it's, that's a tricky question because it's like me as a person who's like, you know, on my more, on the moral side, right? You're like, oh, Yes, they do because they have such influence on their side. It's like they're just living their lives. Yeah. If people choose to look up to them, that's on them. Right. Um, for me personally, I do think that they have some sort of social obligation because they influence so many women and right. so many young girls. Um, and like I said, it goes back to my point earlier, like, all the women look the same because Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, yeah. they all their looks are the same. Absolutely, they do. You know, <laughs> the sweatpants now is like the sweatpants with heels, so everybody, everyone is wearing sweatpants with heels. <laughs> it's super cute. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but it's you know they influence them, but what are they really influencing other than the way that women look? What about? their mentality like what about their emotional state like, right things like that are more but honey that doesn't sell that doesn't make money that's not what sells you know they're not they're not selling that <laughs> yeah, right. and you know what's funny i was thinking about this the other day the fact that like so kim kardashian and kylie jenner they're 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 both like kind of brushed on the topics that they're both in. i think more kim is incredibly insecure mm -hmm. which is um, she, she can be vocal about it, but she doesn't, she talks about it, but she doesn't publicize it on social media. Right. Um, and to me, it's like, if she were to really be open about that, I think she can really make a difference yes. and really influence yep. them to speak up about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and Kylie too, like Kylie, I mean, didn't she just release her, her, her pregnancy video, which was beautiful. Right. Um. But she said in, in the caption that, or in an article that said, she didn't want to talk about her pregnancy because she has, like, social anxiety. And I'm like, these yeah. are issues that, these are real-life issues that these women deal with, and these are real-life issues that young women also deal with. So why are they not talking about that? Right. Well, you know, the thing is that um, I think they probably don't even know how to deal with it themselves. And the way that they the way that they deal with it is by not dealing with it, by not talking about it, by avoiding it, even though they well, know. For validation right. In all the wrong places. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so I kind of want to shift a little bit because I know that you yourself do work um, with young girls, and you offer your services, um, you know, to high schoolers, you know, um, as part of their prom experience for those who may not be able to, you know, afford a makeup artist or any of the other items that kind of go along with prom night. So can you talk right. a little bit about um, that prom initiative and what, what you do and why you're so passionate about that? Uh, sure. So when I was in high school, I was like, you know, oh my God, prom, prom, that was like the big thing. And I wasn't able to afford a dress. I wasn't able to afford makeup. And, you know, I ended up, my parents obviously ended up paying for my dress, but my, I had a mentor at the time and I will never forget that she came my, the day of the prom, she got out of work early. She got work early. She came, she did my makeup. She fixed my hair. She made sure that I had pictures. So it was like, she was just there for me at a time that my family wasn't able to because we were going through other things. Right. And so I always remember that. And so when I started really doing makeup, I said, you know what? I feel like she did this for me. And what can, how can I use my talents to do that mm. for other girls? Um, and so I started a few years ago, like four years ago, I started giving away my services to women, to young girls who couldn't afford their prom makeup. And so last year specifically, I, I couple, I 
worked with this couple who worked with um, young girls. Um, they run a sports program with young women and young boys. And we came to the school in the Bronx, and we picked 11 girls, and we provided hair, makeup, nails, um, dresses for them, shoes. They ended up getting an escort to take them to the prom. And so it was like a full package. And I feel like one, I feel like I'm big on community. I feel like it's so important to always give back to your community. Mm-hmm. It's important to remember the people that have helped you along the way um, and also give back. And that was also the message that we told the girls. Like, these are everyone that came together today came together because we wanted to provide something for you and also the importance of being able to give back when you're able to. Yes. And so this year, um, we're going to do it again in June, and I'm really excited. So I've been working on that um, and just putting all the pieces together to get that off the ground. That is wonderful. Um, you know, I didn't go to my prom. And that is a that is another story for another day because I was just I was I was a bad team. That was my punishment. I was, that's all I will say about that. <laughs> but you know, I like it's always something that I regret not doing until this day. Like I tell my parents, like you guys were freaking horrible. No matter what I went through, you should have at least let me go to prom, you know? Like that's like a once in a lifetime thing, right? You don't ever get another prom, you know? And so I'm a bit, yes, girl, I'm a bit traumatized. Yes, I'm traumatized. I didn't get to go to prom, and I didn't have a, I didn't have a sweet sixteen. I didn't have any of those rites of passage. <laughs> I'm gonna have like a, I'm gonna have a quinceanera. I don't care. I'm gonna be like, quiero mi quince, you know, like I show that they used to have on MTV. Yeah, I remember that, quiero mi quince. But anyway, so I actually want to, um, you know, I'm having so much fun with you on on the show. So thank you for being here again. Oh, thank you. But I want to talk about something a little bit more serious because we're in a time um, where women are owning their voices and they're really being vocal about certain things. And right. so in a time where we're seeing so much light being shed on the times up and me too movements, you as, as someone who is in the beauty industry, right? Whose job is really to make women look their best and look beautiful. That in itself, you know, attracts men sometimes unwanted, unsolicited attention what are your thoughts on all of these women who have now found the courage to speak out against some of the sexual assault and sexual harassment that they've been experiencing and that we all have been a victim of at some point or another? I mean, we've all been, I know for me, walking down the street in the summer, you know, you get catcalled, the sexual harassment, you know, what are your thoughts about all of this, especially now at this time? I'm like, so happy that this is finally coming to light like this is it's about time I feel like women have been holding on to this shame this guilt this trauma for so long mm-hmm. and it's finally like get to the mountaintop and scream it and let these people know what has been done to you like and of course it's all personal some women choose not to share because it's so traumatizing and they're still feeling a way about it. Um, but I'm just so proud. I'm like, I I want this conversation to continue on because it's so, so, so important. Um, it's just like, I had this conversation even with like male friends. They were just shocked at people that they saw on like the news, people that they saw on like photographers they knew or like you know, um, artists that they knew or, like, like directors that, they, that they've that seen or whatever, they were just shocked at, like, the masses of women coming out and speaking up. And I, you know, we have this conversation. I'm like, this happens every single mm-hmm. day for women. And we are taught that, you know, you can't say anything. Right. You have to feel shameful. You have to feel guilty that you were the one who provoked this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no speak up, say something, like, and, like I said, and I think it's so important to continue the conversation because men need to be made aware of how severe this is and how 
how much is happening because right. I feel like a lot of guys weren't even aware that this was happening at all. Well, you know, I actually want to talk about that um, a little bit because I, I, I beg to differ. I think that men do know that this happens. I just don't think that they realize um, how, how severe it is and how, um, how traumatizing it is for a woman because, you know, there's oftentimes where there will be groups of guys together and you will walk down the street and they will say something inappropriate to you and they will make comments and they will hiss. And it might be one person saying it to you, but the rest of them are standing there. Right. And, about it. Right. Exactly. And not saying uh-huh. anything. And so I guess for, for, for me, and one of the things that I think mm-hmm. a lot about is what responsibility, you know, do these men have to check each other when shit like this happens, right? Like when they're witnessing, um, some type of harassment going down, or they know that a sexual assault has gone down. What responsibility are they taking uh, to stop it and to make sure that it's not going to happen again? Because I think we women on our own can't stop it. We need allies, and men have to be oh. our allies. Of course. I think men need to speak up, too, and need to check their boys when they see that their boys are doing something. Um, men are sometimes put in a... I feel like they're afraid of being vulnerable or afraid of having their egos hurt in a way. Because they punks, so, basically. Yeah. <laughs> not all, but, but some. Not all, not all, all but they, they're scared of losing their egos at times. So, you know, they're scared of the repercussions that it has on themselves, right? Yeah. So, like, look at, look at with Harvey Weinstein, for example. All these directors, friends of his, knew... Something was happening, like we said, or like they might have not known the severity of it, but they kind of brushed it under the rug because they didn't want the repercussions that it comes from speaking up. Yeah. And I think that's what people need to realize. Like, you need to kind of own up to that. Like, you need to own up to the repercussions. You need to be okay with speaking up when things are being done wrong to someone because. That's what you, you don't know the trauma that right. that's causing someone. You don't know how that's affecting someone. You know, and uh-huh, no, it takes courage to it, do that. It let's, does. Let's be honest. It takes courage to do that. It does. But, it is. It's scary. Uh-huh. Um, but I think as scary as it is for men, right, it's 10 times scarier for women for because women. we are the vic- we're the victims. It's, it's, it's us that it's happening to. Right. Absolutely. And so if men feel like they can't say anything, you know, imagine what that must feel like for a woman. And I think that what men have to start thinking about is that this woman is somebody's mom, somebody's daughter, somebody's <laughs> wife, somebody's sister. Uh-huh. Right. And so that they have to start thinking about the women in their lives who are also being subjected to this type, these types of behaviors from other men out in the world. And I that is that, how, that's, I'm sorry, that's how we just, we begin to kind of combat this because um, we're all apart. We're all in it together. No matter, you know, just, it just depends um, which side of the spectrum you're looking at it from. Exactly. It's like, you need to come together. It's a sense of community in this. It's speaking up when it's being done to somebody else. It's like you said, putting yourself, looking at it like, oh, that's my mom. That's my sister. Um, because it happens all the time, Nancy, and it's so, so sad. It happens all the time. I know. So I guess, I guess moving, uh, you know, moving along, what or who inspires Melissa? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, (laughs) I, on an artistry side, I am definitely inspired by Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath is, the, one of the first black makeup artists in the industry. Mm. Um, she started in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and what I love about Pat McGrath is that she is so simple. Any interview that she does, she's like very calm, very mellow. Um, she doesn't wear makeup, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And she is a makeup powerhouse. Like, she has worked for Cover Girl. She's like, 
she was like the creative director for Comfort Girl for years when they launched their um, Opal line, when they launched um, their line with Queen Latifah. Um, she is she was the creative director for like um, Dolce Gabbana. She does like all the biggest fashion shows. So like, and everything is behind the scenes. And now is when you're really seeing her on the forefront. Like she's launched. She's I think last year was it that she launched her own makeup brand, um, her own makeup line. I mean, and it's been taking off from there. But it's taken her over 20 years to do that. Wow. She didn't launch into it. Wow. She didn't. She worked and collaborated with other brands, and then has finally created her own her own baby, her own line. Um, mm. And so I I look up to her. I look up to her artistry. Um, just phenomenal. Um, and on a personal level, I look up to all mothers, to be honest with you. Like, I I think growing up, we take it, I don't, I, I want to take advantage of, but we look at our moms and we're like, oh my God, you know, they cook, they clean, they work, they pick us up from school, and you don't, you don't see it, maybe you don't see the full picture as a kid, and as I've gotten older, I have, have matured, and you know, I want to become a mother myself. I see all the hard work that moms put in. Yeah. And how much, they don't get enough credit. I feel like, I see women at work who like struggle every day to leave their kids at daycare. And I'm like, this is so, I just want to hug them because I'm yeah. like, oh my God, you are amazing. Like, this is so amazing. And we, we don't give our moms enough credit. We don't give mothers enough credit. We don't, credit. we don't, we like, don't. Mothers, <laughs> having this conversation and I'm, I'm kind of jumping off topic a little bit but this is why they inspire me so much like there's so much realness in being a mom there's so much like beauty and love in being a mom and it's like there's also a lot of hardships in being a mom and I'm getting emotional I'm not, and I'm not even a mom and you know, and it's funny that you say that, that you know all this and you're not even a mother yet, because I didn't realize all of this until after I became a mom. Like once I became a mother, that was like, that's when I was like, wow, I really need to cut my mom a break. Like I just, I didn't realize just how much they do for yeah. us, how much they sacrifice. Um, and you're there already. So kudos to you. <laughs> about it I talk to like my co-workers my friends at work and I think also men don't realize all the work that mothers put in and all the emotional sacrifices all the um just like the physical sacrifices that you make to like just do this job because you want to raise this beautiful human being yeah. like that's amazing that is so amazing and I'm, I love I feel like I love all mothers. And and it, oh, it, it, it is the most rewarding um, thing agree. that we will ever do. It really is. With all the stuff that I do, nothing brings me more joy than just sitting or laying with my babies in the bed and just talking to them. And it's amazing what these kids will talk to you about. You know, yes. and it's just, yeah, it's so, it's crazy. Um, but uh, the last two questions I have for you, because I've kept you way longer than I promised. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I'm but enjoying this. What advice would you give your younger self? Um, to believe in myself, because I feel like as a woman and as an artist and as a human being, you have so much self-doubt and you have so many moments of like, mm -hmm just questioning yourself so much and I think I I'm a very uh uh I think a lot I think a lot a lot and I as a kid I thought a lot even a lot more than I do now and it was always the thing where I'm like am I enough am I doing enough you know but I was always doing enough I was always just right like and I I wish I could have told myself like just believe that you're worth it and just believe in yourself now because it's like, you're going to be fine. Everything's worked up. Everything has worked out great for you up until this point and you're going to be okay. That is excellent advice that I think we can all take. Just believe yeah. that you're going to be okay. I love that. Um, yeah. It's, it's hard to believe it when you're in the moment, but you have to tell yourself like you just, you know, you're going to be okay. 
and yeah. believe that. It's hard. You're right. When it, when it's in the moment, it's hard to believe that, but you have to trust. Like no one stays, mm-hmm. no one stays in their mess forever, right? We always, no. um, God always delivers us from whatever we're going through. We learn the lesson, hopefully, and we move forward. And if we don't learn the lesson, we will repeat it in another way. So, you know, somewhere down the future, so we, the future so we learn it until yep. we learn it and then we get past it, you know? So I guess before I let you go, please let my listeners know how they can get in contact with you. If they want to book you, you know, for your services or, you know, for any, for any way of getting in contact with you, how is the best way for them to reach you? So my Instagram is makeup by Melissa B fourteen. Um, so you can send me a message through Instagram, or if you want to email me, my email is m u b y m e l c at gmail dot com. Um, and then my website is makeup by Melissa B dot com. Perfect, and I will make sure to include all of that information in the show notes, so you guys can thank just you. click on the link and connect with Melissa. And I just wanted to thank you once again for being my guest. Thank you for being so much fun and so genuine. I absolutely enjoyed this conversation. I know my listeners will too. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Nancy. I really, really appreciate the opportunity and thank you. Great. So now, guys, um, this concludes this week's episode of the Empowerment Hour. Make sure to connect with both myself and Melissa on Instagram. If you loved this episode, please shoot us a message. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what most resonated with you. And like I tell you guys every week, go out there. Don't let anyone deter you from what you're supposed to be doing. Believe in yourself, be productive, and crush those goals.